All right. So I'm going to show you um, how I would go about doing um, this project. Uh, I needed to pick two things. So I took the average maximum temperature and average annual precipitation. And then I sorted them um, from lowest to highest um, for by this and then by this. So if there was duplicates, then it put them in order. So like here, we went highest and highest. Then I looked and saw that there were 202 um, options. Actually, I think there's 201 because there's a title. So I just divided that by um, 60 uh, equals 201 divided by 60, and you get 3.35. So I start on the first one and said every third one I'm going to pick. So there, I'm just highlighting them in yellow so I can see them. And I would do this all the way down uh, until I got to 60 of them. And I'm just so I can find them. And then because uh, Excel has this cool feature called filter, and I can filter by a color. And so I now have the ones that were picked out from my um, uh, incremental uh, sampling. So they weren't in, in alphabetical order by this. They were all in, in, in numerical order by this. So they've changed the orders. Um, and so if I look at number one, it says uh, what two variables I chose. Well, I'm going to choose um, temperature and precipitation, basically because almost every country had those listed. That's pretty much my reasoning. Um, it also has, you know, good numbers uh, that they're not too far apart. So I thought that would, you know, be good for the rest of the things that I was doing, especially like the um, histogram. Because um, I remember I told you, you don't have to do the sample lot. So then I would, number two is my data. Well, I would copy this and put this in. This is my data. Uh, how did I um, I oh yeah uh, 60 countries I, I thought it, there was a thing about um, how you chose it I used a um, like I said I just did every third one uh, systemic uh, method so there's, you know, it's, but there weren't in alphabetical order, so there's a little difference, and I get from the smallest up to the largest because I'm doing most of them. So I have a pretty good range of all my, uh, I will have most of the things in there. And if I really wanted to make sure I got the highest ones too, I would just substitute some of the middle ones for a high one, and then I have all that information for my 60. So it doesn't have to be perfectly systemic. Um, I can use that and go, okay, well, I want to make sure I, get the bottom ones as well. So I'll make sure I, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three. And so I'm doing both top and bottom. There, now when I filter, And again, do it by color. I get the lowest ones as well as the highest ones. So I have the entire range. So that's really kind of going to cover most of my information that I want to have. Um, and I get all good things. So now I have a frequency table, um, uh, histogram. So I need to make a histogram. So once I go to my calculator, um, the cool thing about using this calculator is that I could then do a screenshot of it. Um, I can also do a histogram on here, uh, but I'll do it with the calculator. Uh, for those of you who don't have, um, you can just take a picture of this with your camera, with your phone, and then add it that way. Um, but I'm going to put my data in. I'm going to go stat, edit, and clear out my stuff. Okay, so I have negative, oops, that's a minus, 
negative 9, 9, 9. Oh, I accidentally deleted one of the columns that I wanted to keep in there. 16.5, So I have, I'm just going to put in that first column. I'm not going to do the second column just because I'm, uh, that way you can see. I just want to put this information in so I have my numbers in. Um, the next thing says I want to make a histogram. Okay, so I'm going to go stat plot, second stat plot, second stat plot, second stat plot. There you go. I'm going to go to number one. It's on. I want a histogram. Uh, list one, and my frequency is just one. Oops. Delete. All right, it's nothing. Okay, so I have my histogram. Now if I go to zoom, zoom, is that plot on frequency? I just want this to be a one. So I'm gonna turn this off of alpha and it's a one. There. Now zoom stat, which is number nine. I have my histogram. And notice I have nothing in the middle just because I have nothing. I skipped over those pieces. Um, but that's what my histogram will look like. And I can get my window. Remember, the easiest thing to do is it will come in here and make these things helpful. So negative 10 up to, uh, you know, 45, everything goes up by 10 or five or whatever it is I want to have in there. Um, my minimum, you know, negative one, because it's really going to be nothing. And I might go up to, you know, 15. And then I come back and I look at the graph and I can see all of the pieces that are there and how they've been put in. Um, that that's my histogram. And I need to take a picture of this so I can do with that because I have this here. I could do this, but I just take a picture with a camera, crop it out, and put my histogram in. You know, like I don't have any numbers in here, so maybe I want to make sure uh, my window that my y scale goes up by you know, two or three or something. It's only going up to 15, so I, I'll just make it three. And so now I can see a tick marks where everything is, and that gives me an idea. And if I want to see the things, if I do trace, I can actually see the heights. So the number here is how many things there are. Zero of those I have. Between 10 and 20, there's 11. Between 0 and 10, there's 3. Between negative 10 and 0, there's 1. And so I have all my, my pieces that I'm looking at, or my histogram. Um, and I do one for the next one. Uh, the classes really are just how, why, why did we choose this? Well, because I wanted to make sure I had enough space to see everything. Um, I wanted to, you know, I don't want to have too many, you know, like seven is usually kind of the maximum. So um, I would look and go, okay, well, what's my range? Subtract, you know, find seven. I can find the range here by going to stat, calc one variable statistics, which is really the next thing here. Um, oh, sorry, for its description of words, um, does it look skewed to one direction or another? Uh, you know, I have this one value that's a negative, which probably is an outlier. 
uh, which, which possibly an outlier. And I'm going to look in right. Maybe I'll do a, uh, I think there's a, um, yeah, the five number summary. I believe it wants a box plot. So yeah, I'll look at the box plot, see if that's a thing. And I can do that right away. So second box plot, second stat plot, second stat plot. I come down and oops. I want a box plot, but this one has outliers showing. And again, I'm going to second. I didn't turn it on. Enter there. Now I grab it. I can see, oh, nope. In this case, there are no box plots, but I can see my minimum. I can see my first quartile. I can see my median. I can see my third quartile. I can see my maximum. So that one, their op option allows you to see um, uh, outliers. As I put the rest of these in, this very well might become an outlier. Um, I don't know. Um, I'd have to, to look and see as all the data happened. But that's what I wanted to do. Um, to find out what these numbers are, again, I can hit trace, and I can get my values. I can also, in stats, do one variable statistics, because this is on list one. It gives me my mean, which is one of the things I believe it's asked for. Um, mean, median, mode. OK, I'd have to find the mode myself, unfortunately. Um, but mean, median uh, for each variable also asks about standard deviations. Um, You know, I don't know why there would be differences or similarities. Uh, that's probably doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna take that out because they're completely different uh, pieces. Standard deviations. So here's my standard deviation. Here's my mean. Here's my standard deviation for my sample. My five number summary, which is asked for in number nine, and then. Number eight, I want the to use the IQR rule to calculate um, your standard deviation as well. So here I have S of X is Three max. So I'm just going to put my information right here. Um, I'm just going to make this smaller so I can see the, my screen here. So negative 9.5. Ten point nine, thirteen point seven five, twenty-four point eight five, thirty-five point six. Okay. So it also wanted to know the IQR. Um, so I take the difference between the Q1 and Q3, multiply by one and a half. So twenty-four point eight five minus 10.9 gives me that. Times 1.5. Oh, wait, no, that's not. Um, that's for outliers. Well, yeah, I can see I don't have outliers because um, if I add to add subtract, 
those don't uh, give me these numbers, so I don't have any outliers. Um, the standard deviation, oh yeah, is IQR divided by four. <laughs> Four eighty five minus ten point nine. Right. Let me just go back and just make sure. Weekly work. Descriptive statistics. Read the chapter. Let me just put in standard deviation rule of thumb. Range divided by four, that's what it is. So minimum violence minus maximum divided by four. So 35.6 minus negative 9.5 divided by four. We get 11.275, so pretty close. All right, uh, let me go back in and change this. Okay, range divided by four, rule of thumb, decimate standard deviation. I'll save that and add it to the thing. Um, and so now I've got that piece there. I can see that they're pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's a quick, easy fix. You know, I'm off by a half a thing, not that big a deal. Um, and that's kind of the end of it. Then I'm done. I've done those pieces. I've finished the questions. So outliers uh, here, this is the IQR. My, 1.5 i q r i'll save this and upload it to blackboard um and that's it that whole thing is done. That's the first section. And then the second section and third section would uh, go on and um, just remove this because I have a different one I'm adding. All right, and so that's the end of that whole thing. So I'm going to stop the recording.